Talk then, someone should talk. It's obviously already, already a shambles. Can you believe that? I, I, I'm amazed that we're back on the air and it's already a shambles. What are you doing? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking, no one was speaking, the record was ending, no one was speaking, it was just Kate. Well, I might shoot off. <laughs> already, I might shoot off. It's Bit like we, nothing's changed. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Rick, well, I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never going to do the show again, there yeah. was nothing that was going to bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't going to do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him co coming back for so about two months, you know, because he's got our agent now, representing him. <laughs> I, I thought he was a fool, really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham. And it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening, no one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking with a record then, because there's, no, there's no loss sure. to London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money, we don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I could have had a lie in. I know. But. Um, it's all a ruse to get Mondays off. He's got Mondays off now, because he has to do the show, two hours, two right, hours. and he's still getting paid. And it's all a con, because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel, and he's, it, it's like, oh, we've got to keep Carl happy. Mm. Right? I, I, had, I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 no, you know what I mean, though? And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes and well, I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mandas off. And they, uh, he's probably sitting home now. His family, he's probably ridiculed by yeah. his Well, wife. his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. That he's been fooled mates, by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mates and goes, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham. I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just... It's, it's embarrassing. Just, but it's, do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny and you think you've got one over him. He's going, oh, Mandas off for two enough. hours. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do. You think, like, and now you're now embarrassed because you've said it on air. Uh -huh. But you're only, you're only, you're only conning yourself in the long run because... Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get, what can I get out of the world? What are you going to give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you going to prepare Monday? No, what I have you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What, have you, what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? We three months, we're turning about, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've, we, I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it, if something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good. It was never good, no, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do, it was a laugh. I mean, much more, I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? you? You sounds like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> Um, I said, like I, he's talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I it's said, like having, having the head squoes, right? <laughs> what? Squoes? Squoes is still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right? Yeah. I said he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end, he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. <laughs> <laughs> So. Okay then, what has changed in three months? Exc they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now. Come on, give us something. Bit of Nickelback. What's, <laughs> no, what's happened in three you days? Well, what, what, three what, months? What, in my life or yeah. in here? Nothing's yeah. happened there, nothing's changed there. Right. But, I don't know, what, well, uh, do you know, do you know last time we were on? Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where what? I live. The one that walked around naked? There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked, This right? is when, uh, Carl was watching a woman naked, then she looked at, uh, saw him looking, so what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this, he pulled his pants down so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went, I can't tell you now, but don't look out of the window. <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. That woman, she's, uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs>
Nickelback, Sunday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. It reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fate to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. Not good. I've got to be controversial. I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I would hope so, mate. I hope Do you know so. what I mean? Are we going to hear some rock later in the show? We're going to hear lots of rock. Excellent. It's like I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, we've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're going to hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. Oh, Back. incidentally, before we uh, carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird, I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we've got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually it divides the listeners, is your laugh. It's interesting. Some people love it, they find it infectious, they yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space, like a kitchen Terrifying. or something, it's annoying. Like, Horrific. Carl was annoyed, because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? He was on the toilet. <laughs> I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, no, it's not one o'clock He doesn't yet. like the squeezing. The squeezing head. But, yeah. Um, but He's the squeezing one. The funny thing is, right, we were out a few weeks ago with, with a mate of mine, mm. right, and uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right, give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And uh, I was like, don't do that. You know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head squeeze. As if it's like Marmite. As if, <laughs> as if some people love it. Yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. there's but there's there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the yeah. belly laugh. But there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do. Well, I got to get air out quickly because exactly. I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all they try and get out to it. So I have to get out really fast, like a like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that <laughs> is that how you explain the fact that you're you're quite fat? <laughs> yeah. It's that's actually laugh. that's just laughing <laughs> waiting to come out. Yeah. Every time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing, like <laughs> yeah. Brett Anderson. Oh dear. Well, anyway, it Look. reminded me of the uh, the game that you you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM when it was literally make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Lovely. was a great game. I think I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah, I remember yeah. the very first time. Yeah. Never, I tell you what, it's you not know what, great. Though, Ant and Deck do it now. They really? do. They actually, it's very similar to make Ricky laugh. It's called make Ant laugh. <laughs> Interesting. So so many of our great ideas have been uh, have been stolen. Yeah, or stoled. Stoled. Yeah. And anyway, I just I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a picture on. which um. <laughs> Which I think might, it might be a Ricky Gervais, <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try yeah. and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, because it's like a Dave Gorman project? Can we just stop, let's, I, it's getting, it, so, you know, let's say a word often enough, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what are we going to refer to you as? <laughs> Alright, well, make Fatty laugh <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is a new... A new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm concerned because okay. well, I know. I, 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 I'm not going to. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure, a performing, you're not a performing monkey. No. Okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, <laughs> a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a child, a neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny it said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist. Then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, this is, is a quote. This is a quote from him. Right. right? Bear in mind, he's a fourteen-year-old boy. He's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, "Then we had sex. It was every boy's fantasy." <laughs> All right. You're going to show me the picture of her now. Aren't so you? it's a picture of her. Uh, this is not. Bear right. in mind. This is. Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. He's collapsed on the floor. I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like the drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> but, I tell you she looks like- she make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those- I they've got one with a fag on as well! No, I know! It's just the- uh, that's all of them out of makeup though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see- you should see- <laughs> Oh, oh God! Oh. Oh. oh, oh God! How old is she? <laughs> forty-eight. Oh, oh God! Oh, forty-eight. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with that. I'd say if you don't know what, if you didn't see, you weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture. She looks oh, just God. like 
the um, oldest man in the world. His photo was on, uh, in newspapers and on the oh. web for a while. He was about 135 yes, or something. Hang on a minute. Yeah, Carl. Yeah, look. It's, you know, Carl, but, Carl's got a theory that Chinese people don't age well. This man was a, he was a, uh, a giant man, <laughs> right? And he was 120 or something. Yeah. Mm. Did was, you see a picture of him? Yeah, he's, he's still alive. alive. No, he's not. No, he's no, dead. He's not. No, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, I died at 120, so... He said 120 or something, but makes you wonder. Go what on. makes you wonder? Well, because they don't age well. <laughs> I think he's using that. <laughs> what he's probably about, what? about so 37. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Honestly, we walk down the street, right, and we see a, 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 an elderly Chinese person, yeah. right, and, um, it's kind of go, oh, I'm just thinking he is. Yeah. Like, it, it's not... <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> this, this notion that Chinese people don't age yeah. well. I don't know what, that... where this has come from. Oh. No, I, I mean, I'm not having a go. No, right? I, don't, I, don't, I never want anyone to think I'm, I'm like having a go at them. But no. they are really good looking and they're healthy and that. <laughs> till they're about. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen one, right? Can you, I'm can you, <laughs> can you tell me if you've seen a Chinese person no. who's about 30? Well, it's always, it's either 20 <laughs> or 50. There's no middle ground. <laughs> This is two hours of absolute drivel but from sorry, the brain of Carl Wilkinson. Let me just check something. So uh, the guy, the Chinese gentleman who died recently was 130. Mm, your well. theory is, <laughs> sure, <laughs> your theory is that he's maybe in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. This is an elaborate conspiracy on his part because obviously whenever they talk about the oldest people in the world, it is always a Chinese person. Yeah. Invariably. They, they do, yeah. I mean, they seem to win that Again. every year. Go on. So your theory is that in those small backwater they villages have, oh, in know. China- Ross McWhorter comes to a little yeah, village- Yeah, they go, the Guinness guys go, on the way. He goes, ah, well, until recently, the oldest person in the world, like, how old are you? And they're so embarrassed because they think they look about under 20, they go, uh, under 120, they go, really? Go, yeah, can I have his birth certificate now? In fact, I think this Chinese bloke didn't, he, it wasn't verified by the Guinness Book because he didn't have his papers. Didn't have his papers, no. So. Is this the same one or a different fella? I think it might be on. the same guy, I'm not sure. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> So there's, an in, there's a huge conspiracy amongst these Chinese villagers that every when time When you get to uh, about 50, say you're 70, because no one will believe us. Well, if you can confirm or deny that, then, uh, then please email in ricky.gervais at xfm. This you, is the racist it. show on XFM 104.9. Call in if you're anything less than a little mank. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM 104.9, with me, Ricky Gervais, you, Stephen Merchant, GQ presenters of the year. Radio personalities of the year. It's official. We're uh, the best radio personalities of the year. I've, I've, um, we got that award sent to us, didn't we? And we yes. did a little thing. But it was only our two names on it. It so had your name, Rick, definitely. I remember that. It had my and name. And your name. Didn't see Carl Pilkington's name anyway. No. Either. And yet he's the one with the day off and the money and the, the, the con in the MD and making him cry at home. Let me just mate. remind, can I just check that Go again? He, so he's made a fool out of the MD he's made a fool and out all the, the MD, major, all basically this, all the capital all this shit about, oh, I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not. I want, okay, I want a day off then, which is the same day off as his girlfriend gets off. So Convenient. he's just like walking around, I don't know, Hyde Park. Yeah. Just feeding ducks when yeah. he should be working out what can he can do instead of rockbusters, which is basically blockbusters <laughs> with a word changed. <laughs> Christ's sake! Right. Listen. If that's if that's annoyed you, I'll what? tell you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there. And I'd be, <laughs> no, and I'd be giving him the finger. I go, you can intimidate my family. I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I tell you what. Um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike, I'm behind that, it's fair enough, but not when it's mm. these wildcats. They're just out there, they're just taking days off, willy-nilly, they're not, they're, wow. they're sealing up the post boxes, it's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records but, Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid, because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary <laughs> Review haven't turned up, so he's, he's in a terrible way. And, uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me, there's nothing, there's no, yeah. there's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night, and I, it got me panicked, because I was thinking about if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups. And do you know what? <laughs> like a cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. 
Oh, Every, I, I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes? I had so the, much the mash farmers? last night. I had so much sausage mash, right, I, I, second helpings, that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds. Spuds and bread. I could not do without but spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds, I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah. And it's like, you, they're amazing. You can boil them, you can broil them. Yeah. I don't know what broiling is, but I. I, it's, I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as, I mean, obviously the chipped potato is For is the working classes, oh, the chip. It was always on. The chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the, uh, you know, the, the death trap fire, um, what's it, polystyrene ceiling <laughs> <Yeah>. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. Come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah, always had chips. Because I, all I remember hearing, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Yeah, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's, like... I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me, because What did you have to do? Didn't you have to, what, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Well, do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you. So if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what you're playing at. Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to, like... I haven't had errand for since yeah, the 70s. Nice just just got just... On, I went to Euphase, right, the little local supermarket. Yeah. And I got, uh... What's it called? Euthan Euthanasia? <laughs> what? I did... Euphase. 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 Yeah. Like, H U G H U phase. Oh, Hugh oh phase it's his name. name, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. I just had to get—I right, yeah. just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did, yeah. And a loaf, staple. So yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when like even the teachers were like, "Just, just make something up." Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, love start joyriding or something. Live. I'm, I remember wh uh, when James was little. She was at school. I think it was about ten or something. Like that do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get it as you knew, unless. It was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know the Dibblethwaite had slut. one. I don't know, maybe. Uh, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, I'm just, I don't know, I just, it feels like, it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I've got nothing else. i got to have that. You know, you've got your fancy pastas for the, uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or, uh, or mash, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure. Sure. Is, is it, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you one strike that would we'd go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, take your picture. Or they, uh, they, they do a caricature of you. The strike! Yeah. Imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well, I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'll so... I'll tell uh, you, I'll tell you also, the strikes that have no effect. What? Those, um, people in, um, in nightclub toilets. Who just, you know, kind of there, they got the, uh, the Lynx deodorant oh, spray. Oh, they're quite controversial at the moment, with the, the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the Cheryl Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? Sure, I got so, some thoughts on that actually. Like what? Share. Or maybe well, we play a record. I'll share my thoughts on. Well, thought on um, Tweedster coming up. Um, some Steve Merchant thoughts on the show uh, Tweedy case. <laughs> <laughs> What's FM one hundred and four point nine? Some REM, right? Uh, What's yeah, the yeah, frequency, yeah, Kenneth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 104.9 XFM. I'm Richard oh. Mays with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl the user Pilkington. <laughs> Just takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes, takes. Destroyed a man. Go <laughs> <laughs> with you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you should talk like that more. It's cool and sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I make it clear now, I do not condone in any way, shape or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean toilet attendants? Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not, um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant, yeah. Yeah. So, um, go on. But, because I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or, uh, pubs or big friendly pubs, you go yeah. in there, and there's the toilet attendant in there, he's got his little display of, um, you know, aftershave sprays, yeah. some sweets maybe, Blue whatever it might be. Yeah, maybe a lollipop. Maybe a lollipop. And 
Oh, all right, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy to do irritate they, do, the When the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy who's just like- <laughs> Is it like busking? Yeah, he snuck in. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour, <laughs> he's got a little bag, a carrier bag, yeah. he snuck in the, in the toilet. But the uh, thing is, it's the fact that, uh, toilet attendants, fair enough, I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me and then shoots off, but it's when I have to see them there. I, I feel know. guilty because I'm like, I've got a, it's like, I maybe wash my hands, I'll forget he's there, he'll hand me a paper towel, suddenly I've got to tip him, like but a quid or something. It annoys me because they're there, I wash my hands at all, I don't usually wash my hands, I, 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 my I, hands. I, I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out, oh. I do it by stand and change my trousers <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> exactly. So it annoys me, I have to do, go through this charade of getting it out, <laughs> slashing <laughs> out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, just if he did any of those elements, what, I'd tip it for him a quid, yeah. Pop it out, pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. And I, I just, It's just guilt, and I, sometimes I'll hold it in, because I'm nervous I don't want to go back in what there, it's costing me a fortune. What annoys me is a, like, a posh award ceremony, it's a pound a piss. It is a pound a piss. Do you know what I mean? So I, you know, I, Or in a like... top hotel or something. Yeah. It's absurd. And I'll tell you, tell you what's worse than that, I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids, but it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanised. You know, if he was only dehumanised, Rick. <laughs> yeah. If he, if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under, <laughs> the, under the the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or if and he could hide underneath the sink, like thing from the Adam's. Like, just he just put, puts out. He you can know, just pop a hand out. Doesn't say anything. With just a glove, hands in the paper so you don't towel. even see like you know, hand out. And then I go, I put a pound in. I take the thing, put a pound in. Nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no <laughs> aggro. Exactly. It's the fact I got to see them and I feel guilty because you know I'm on the radio. I've got a cushy life. I know. Here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad. It ruins my evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them. Can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a can they get a job illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Born again. Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.Gervais at XFM.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, uh, actually Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, it's yeah. his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends, but also because of the... The postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the postal strike won't be on around that time. <laughs> Alright, Carl. Mm. So but anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? I Carl. I've still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. It'll make, happy birthday, it'll make Tracy. Happy. And hello to Aidan who's uh, thrown in to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, God so we're, we're, we've gone. International. Sure. Now, there's uh, also a questionnaire. A questionnaire has been sent in by uh, Ruth Chamberlain at Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College <laughs> seems a weird. Cord Wainers. It used to. Yeah. It's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette. <laughs> I, I think it's. Too. Yeah. Anyway, it's a. Uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry. And anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire. And we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire. But we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, about Carl, look, he's yawning, he's looking round. He's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably, you've probably ruined a man's career. He's been ridiculed now for doing this. That, that he's so weak where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So, let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do, then you get two days off, all right? All right. Right, Carl, it's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh, yeah. There's one person- <laughs> <laughs> Well, that should answer it right there. The <laughs> first question, Carl, on a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it at this moment or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like- oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it? No, but it doesn't mean I'm not I'm not happy in that. Like I, I'm all right at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a, it's probably on a, about an eight. I was a, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over her haircut. Yeah. Right. She went for a haircut and came back with something that I didn't like. What? Sorry. What did you say? <laughs> you so so when your girlfriend walked to the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right. Do you well, say she that? could tell by the look on my face. I, I but, said, but don't you say, no, I'm, I'm happy with it, I just, just can't tell. I'm loving it. Because I'm, then she might have it done again. Oh, uh, Carl, I just cannot know. get over you. I really can't, I no, but cannot. No, you, you haven't seen it. Right? I'll st 
So, so then I was fed up, but what, then I thought- Sorry, what authority have you got uh, to talk about haircuts? Yeah, you had that. you had the, uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack, it was two pounds a cut, told you you had the hair of a Chinaman, well, you <laughs> wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now, you got nowhere. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open, so don't- Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on? <laughs> I don't know. Well, she knows now, doesn't she? What did you say? What, what words did you, did you do about say? it, I though? I just said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Interestingly, oh, no. that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God. Which one oh, of Slade? That one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. <laughs> yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy... She yeah. had her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dumper. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm... So, so prior to that, you're on a nine. Then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what uh, you're on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while well, Star Sailor was on, a bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> so, yeah, about a five or six. So, generally speaking, <laughs> what would you say you are about on? About four. You're on about <laughs> four for <laughs> All right. Um, what would you give someone who wasn't very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Kyle? Depends why they're not happy. They're not- they're low, okay, so what would you give them? I mean, if you- if, yeah, depends, innit? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure. Or some mittens. Yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And- well, and, well, and well, dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't no, know. You gotta answer the question. Alright, so hang on, let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? are you gonna do you now to go and make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? <laughs> I don't know yet, I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so w w when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Oh, Christ. Okay, oh. and, uh, oh. alright, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, Carl. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, isn't it? Learning something. Right. <laughs> that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love the qualifier. <laughs> that's no, I a think bit it was weird. Two, I, do, I think it was two different seven sentences. <laughs> I think it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for him. Don't put words in his mouth. You can have anything you want, it'll cheer you up and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's got to be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What What would you have? It can be, it can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, let someone else wish for that. Sure. <laughs> It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, why should you do it? And then let someone else gets a nice new watch and there's world peace. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round, it's nice and peaceful, you know what time it is. He's swanning round, he's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am, really. I don't, I don't really want that Are you much. really? But you're on a four. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, on a happy yeah, scale yeah, of four. Yeah, you're on a four. Surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's, what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's what's a ten? Contentment, absolute contentment, joy Bliss. in your heart, yeah. inwardly and outwardly. Not walking round with a little round man head with your mouth open, going, "What's the point of that? I've done it once." <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you still got all the condoms? You've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna get everything. Uh, some air gel. Come on, ten. Just one thing that would make you happy. It would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well. <laughs> I have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away. Shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Because I, because I am happy. I know you. I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know? But, do you know? He it, right. it, it wouldn't want to be too rich. He said, because if I was too rich, then Suzanne would say, "Let's go around the world." He said he wants to be rich enough. So they're happy in that. They got their bathroom in, but they can't. They still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that, think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round Charlie's Chocolate Factory <laughs> <laughs> and he'd said, actually, Carl, I want you to take over the factory. It was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I'm and happy to go back uh, and live. No, no he'd have said, he said I'll, have, I'll work it, but I'm not working Mondays. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. Imagine giving a Chocolate Factory to a kid.
I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least, he yeah. enjoyed it more. Bragg from his uh, essential Billy Bragg compilation. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking Billy Bragg, or I can't be bothered, politics, and I have to say, buy this CD, skip past every song that is, for instance, um, <laughs> There is Power in a Union. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be duped by fascism. Yeah, it's your, uh, it's your uh, right and duty to vote. Yeah. Right wing, wrong wing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Ignore all of that. But just listen, love, just listen to the love, love songs. His love songs are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fan fantastic. Nearing tonight I celebrate my love for you with a pint of beer and a new tattoo. Uh, it's yeah, great. Brilliant. Yeah, look, lose the ones about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Stri striking. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because we know what we think of that. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend that. Um, and, uh, what, Carl, what? we're on happiness. Carl. Yeah. I'll oh, try Carl, and explain Carl's to Carl happiness. that the aim to, you know, it's really to get on a ten. Yeah. Well, I like the he's fact that he started on a nine. But I love the fact he's happy with four. Yeah. I, I love that. No, but what what I mean is, right, I'm not looking for, like, happiness. Right. No. I'm You're all right You're not looking for as... happiness? What? <laughs> What's that for? What I mean is, right, I'm happy when I'm not fed up. So what I mean is, I'm happy- Is this the- is this your, in your new book? Psychology <laughs> of the Mind? What- what is that? I'm happy when I'm not fed up. <laughs> That's like an eight-year-old trying to explain happiness. Johnny, what is it when I'm happy when I'm not fed up, miss? Well done. Good boy. That's it. You're happy when you're not fed up. Talk like an adult. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you, though. I don't... What? I, I'm happy most of the time. It's just that when things niggle me, I find that... M I realise when I'm annoyed more than when I'm happy. But, Carl, you, every time we talk to you, you are whinging about something. You've got yeah. something that annoys you. But he's you. one of those people that if he whinges loud and he gets away with it, like he's in here, I think he goes, oh, I'm really busy. Remember? I come in and he's doing nothing. He's chatting because he's having big, long chats with everyone about how someone's wound him up. Yeah. And they all come and they go, oh, Carl's fed up. Because he's got this show. You know what I mean? He's wormed his no, way. No, hang on a minute. Go you on. came in. You came in moaning about the post and that today. Yeah. But everyone's annoyed and frustrated by that. There's small businesses going out I'm of not, business. I'm not. You haven't heard me. No, you're not because who's sending you letters? No one. Mm. You've got no friends. No. You've said that yourself. Yeah. You've openly declared you don't want friends. They're yeah. too much hassle. Yeah. 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 For, uh, that, so. yeah. That is that is my job. Friends is the, it, that is the point of life to me. It's I can't wait to see them. I squeeze their head. I welcome oh, them in. Oh, they annoy me. <laughs> they <laughs> annoy me. I love it. Friends are annoying. He's even scared of like uh, doing some uh, with a friend or you know, uh, getting a gift because he goes after buying one back now. Yeah, it's sort of like life's a bit of a chore for Carl, isn't it? Well, anyway, all right. Let's leave that aside. Obviously, you're never going to be entirely happy, although apparently you are already on the brink of happiness. All you no, have to I say is you your right. hair look nice. That's all you have to say. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, and that's it. End of story. What's the point in that? What is the point? Because she that? doesn't re she doesn't really care what you think, but she doesn't want to hear that she looks like Dave Hill from Slade. She's not having her hair cut just to please you, Carl. Despite what you might think, <laughs> yeah. he's taken aback by that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, happiness then. Yeah. All right. So the thing is, I, I was happy the other week, right? When I was going up to Manchester on the train, mm. nice quiet carriage. I'm sat there reading about sharks and that, right? <laughs> nice, yeah. nice and quiet. And I got annoyed, I texted you, didn't I? Yeah. When, uh, two fellas got on. Um, can we talk about it? Well, yeah, you, you, I mean, you've, you've started it. Two gay men got on. Go on. Two gay fellas got on. Yeah. And it wasn't the fact they were gay that bothered me. It no. was like, you know, each to their own. Let sure. them get, you know what I mean? Let yeah. them do what they do. Yeah. And, um, Behind closed doors. But they started talking really loud. Huh? Right. And they were going on about, uh... That's annoying what? anyway. That's annoying whether you're straight or gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. talking to you But do you know what theory I have about <laughs> they go out late? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gay people always go out late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we're... Yeah, I mean, what, what what time do you go out in the evening? Uh, 7.30. If you go out about 7.30, yeah. if you, yeah. you know, if I'm out of work, I might, I might go out about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Mm. I guarantee I'll sort of be in bed by about half 12. Sure. At that time, they're still sort of ironing the jeans, <laughs> right? And and the funny thing was, I, I've, <laughs> ironing always, in their jeans. I've always said this, right? <laughs> and, and you, Abba. So, you sort of said that's rubbish. I'm sat on the train reading about sharks. These two are talking, and they're going, "Oh, we can't wait to get there." And his phone goes, and he goes, uh, "Hello," and uh, on the end, he goes, "Anyway, I'll, I'll see you at one then," right? Right. So I thought, well, maybe that's tomorrow. 
yeah. could be one in the afternoon, that's when yeah. most people would meet. Yeah. And then he carried that's on talking. That's when most people would meet! Carried on talking and he goes, yeah, so anyway, like I say, see you tonight. One o'clock is meeting someone. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know you why you're out that late. Do you remember when his favourite record of all time is The Killing of Georgie? Sure. He said, would he have been killed if he'd have been <laughs> a, a, back at a decent time? <laughs> yes. uh, there's it's no mention point. of the time sure. in this song. And then the funny, the funny bit was actually, that did make me laugh, right? Uh, when he'd finished talking on the phone, he said to his partner, right, uh, oh, there you go, let's have a little chat. And the fella said, who was that? And he said, oh, it's, it's Dave. He said, which one's Dave? He said, you know, the one with the shaved head. I thought, in the gay community, yeah. that isn't a good description. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So I've, got, well, I've got little shaved heads. Before we move on, was the Sharks article interesting? Did you learn anything? It was pretty good. Was it? Go yeah, on, I'll teach it. you something about that later. Oh, okay. Uh, is, this, is, is this educating Ricky? Uh, it wasn't, but I can, I can teach you a bit. Yeah? Alright. That's good. Play some ads on that. And Play some ads on this tune, and then have we got maybe a competition? Yeah. All what right. have we got? We're all looking forward to that. Alright. <laughs> Fortune faded. Fortune faded. Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours a day, then a Monday half. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down into the depths for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, Quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out, because we've been at it in the office, and we've got to be- Okay, um, okay, I'm just gonna say it, um, I think Shed Seven have split up. Sorry, I didn't- Shed Seven have split up. Ah, uh, um, <coughs> I- sorry, I think I got something in my eye, <laughs> uh, it's just a bit dusty now, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true, if not- we got their, at least we got their music. Their music, <laughs> the music, the music lives on. So we're going to dedicate this show to Red Seven and all the bands they influence. Influence. So we're just going to play just every 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 artist that that formed a band after they'd heard Shed Seven. Just play them from now on, and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed Seven hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website. It said about, is it true? Shed Seven has split up. And the next, you know, one of those sort of dorky message boards, someone came on and said, you are joking. <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that uh, uh, it's just a rumour. It is just a rumour, yeah. Then uh, get in touch. Just, just call in if it's true. Um, well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, yeah. uh, call in and say, what, what was the split all about? <laughs> Tell you what I, uh, read about. Sharks, monkeys, or jellyfish? Uh, it's, it's ten past, isn't it? We haven't, uh, we haven't done a, a little bit of knob news. <laughs> no, right. we haven't done knob news, no. But, um, It's been three months. It's been, it's been three months coming. There's this, there's this thing, uh, I don't know the full story, I don't know how it happened, right, but little, little Russian, uh, little Russian fella. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, sort of having, uh, sort of emptying his bladder, right, and yeah. somehow electrocuted himself. Right. right. And, uh, sort of did a bit of damage. How did he, oh, is he I, I don't know, some I don't live know. Wires or something. something like that. So did anyway. damage to himself or to an electric fire or something? No, to himself. To himself. Yeah. And, um, so the doctor- Didn't, didn't slip and t t curling tongs went up his ass when he was pissed because <laughs> that's, that's happened a lot. Yeah, we've all, we've, all, we've all been there. We've all shoved the old curling tongs up the ass <laughs> yeah. when having a piss. Right. So, um, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> no, come on, no, we're interested, we're interested. What, well, come on, we're interested, don't you? You can't be bothered, you get Mondays off, do some work. Right, so anyway, so the doctor says, oh, it's not looking good, we'll have to take that off. Mm. What? He's like, the, oh. Uh, uh, to me. Yeah. Really? <laughs> But the funny thing is, right? Nothing funny about that. They've done, uh You do me adding. Just me tell the today. story! Just do me adding. Well, oh, you can chill out I've on Monday. Got, I've only got 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you every Saturday, I'm gonna get the money's worth out of this, cos you get Mondays off, and I can't, uh, I can't bear the fact that someone's getting away with something like that, cos it's terrible. So you're gonna stick this out, or you're gonna have to work Mondays. So take it on the chin, mm. right? Okay. Just finish the story. Yes. I command you. Just do it. Anyway, so they've, they said, he said, you know, you, will you be able to sort me a uh, little knob out? A prosthetic right? knob, yeah. yeah. But they put him out yeah. for the operation. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah. 
Right, and he's thinking, oh, thank God that's over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> They've only grown it on his arm. What are you talking about? <laughs> You twat. Shut the f- d- 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 you an idiot. What do you mean they've grown it on his arm? Apparently, like, that's- that's the way they do it. Oh, yeah, but to, to then put it on- that, that- that wasn't a mistake. It wasn't doctor going, does it go there? <laughs> Some bloke didn't- I didn't do a degree. Are you a real doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. but why- why put it there? Cos it's got a gra- cos it's got a grow. it's got a graph there, it's where they can control it. To skin- the to skin tissue. But on your arm? Well- but they're going to remove it or... from the arm. It's, what do you mean on the back? On your back. Somewhere. Well, well we can't wear a t-shirt. Yeah, but you could. Could, could. He's in hospital. He, he, but th- this way, he can still have a little tug, no, can't no, he? But they'll leave it there for quite a bit. It's not. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be like, oh, it's just there for a few days. Yeah. It's there for a bit. That's not good, is it? So he's got a cock on his arm. Yeah. What's up with that? What do you mean? What's up with that? Well, I mean, these people could say it's a, it's a, it's a thumb or something, couldn't he? <laughs> Yeah. But they don't, they remove be, it. Be good for hitching. It down it, if, if you had, if you had a knob instead of a thumb and you went hitchhiking, just tickle it and they can see it like a mile down the road, couldn't they? <laughs> Posting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd lost my knob, I'd go, oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tits on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd think, oh, I'll have a, just forget it. But, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? <laughs> you know. On you the know. forehead. <laughs> uh, Listen, let's, are we doing a competition? Let's play a tune. Let's, let's come just, on, let's just... Carl, you can't be bothered. Right, right okay, we're going to scrap this yeah. and you're going to work Mondays again. <laughs> Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow on XFM 104.9. Well, it's what the, the uh, Londoners have been waiting for. It's Rockbusters, isn't it, Carl? Well, <sighs> it's, it's not, it's not Rockbusters, it's... It's something we've done. It's a bit like Rockbusters, but it's been tweaked. <laughs> right? Brilliant. So remember that it's done with sound effects and that. Oh, oh God! Christ. Really? What do you mean? All right, come on. Right, remember this one. We d- we tried it before. Hold on, wait a minute. We headphones on. Right, hold on, wait a minute. And this is one you've done in the past. This is not the competition. This is not the competition. But I said, like, what what song is this? Right. <laughs> Smack my bitch up, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Smack my bitch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's kind of that, but but rather than just doing songs, it's that film or song sounds good. You know when you do these things, you can't do them in the week. You've got to do them either Saturdays or Mondays. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to check well, on that because well, it that really annoys me. Because it, uh, it's, it's been done, so it doesn't really. You don't have to worry about it when, it's, no, when but, it gets done. That do you? Because it's done. So. Well, yeah, but I don't. You're taking time out of things you should do. Be doing at work. You're yeah. already weaseling way out. XFM's going down the tube, mm. and you're taking the piss left, right, and centre. Mm. Right. So so. Here's, here's this week's little grab. That film or song sounds good, so what is it? Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Right. what? It's a that? film or a song title, is it? No, it's, it's a film or a song. What do you Forget mean? that. It's a film. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> that must have taken you three minutes. I, I didn't do it on a Tuesday though, because that's cutting into precious time. <laughs> right, have you sorry. seen how long a trial takes him? About thirty minutes. And he's sorry, about, right, let me week. just let's just concentrate for a second. Okay, right. This is a film. This is, is a film title. The title of a film. Yeah. Play it again. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now. I've had that. <clears throat> right. Oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Three, Three months they've waited for that. Three months for that. <laughs> Shite. Do you want to say what the prices are? Oh, I can do. I'd say there's good news and there's bad. I don't know, it, I think maybe this is what people think of Carl's quizzes. This is the respect they show us. Because you know that um, the various companies, they'll send you product which you can include in competitions. It's a yeah. promotional tool. Yeah. They've sent us, um, I'm Alan Partridge, Series 2, yeah. and Faulty Towers, the complete series. Brilliant. On VHS. I mean, who's got a video player anymore, Carl? It's for losers in the working classes. Yeah, for up north. They still sell them up north, I think. Thankfully. In, mar- in market stores. <laughs> it's been redeemed. It's, I mean, I, I wonder how, how we got hold of that. Yeah. Yeah, the Office series two on DVD. That was that was a nightmare, getting hold of that one. The best um, album in the world ever. It's got stuff on there. Super Furry Animals is on there. Supergrass. Gold Frap. And uh, also the best of the Boomtown Rats, which is not bad, and um, a couple of 
teachers' DVDs. So some good stuff there amongst the, uh, the VHSs. And you can win all of those treats by identifying this film. Oh, God. Come here. Ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <laughs> Email only, we don't want to actually speak to you. <laughs> Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm sorry if that's brought you down, it's made um, us feel Can nice. I just say something? What's the phone number, pal? Uh, 08700 800 1234. 08, Call up for no reason, because I want Carl to answer the phone, he hates doing it. So call up and talk to Carl. Ask him anything you want, just talk to him, okay? Right, answer the phone, they're going mad. <laughs> Big Sir on XFM 104.9. He's so annoyed that he had to answer all those calls. <laughs> Why did you like it? I just. We're wasting time, aren't we? <laughs> that's your listenership. No, no, they no. They want to speak to you. No, that's nice and everything that people call up. Yeah. But we should be concentrating on what we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm do, but I do this show to annoy you. I don't do it for the money or the kudos or the awards. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I do it so you have to be here and do what I say for two hours, because you're getting away with murder here in the week. I don't like seeing that. I don't like injustice in the world. I try and fight it wherever I can. <laughs> so, I do it to <laughs> annoy- It's good of you, Rick. Thanks yeah. for doing that, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's and interesting, it though, that you, you, it's pa you're passionate about fighting injustice, but you focus <laughs> specifically on Carl at XFM. <laughs> One yeah. of the world's lesser crimes. <laughs> yeah, being a little yeah. bald mank twat. Exactly. I know, yeah, but it, nonetheless, it is a crime. Look at him, look, he's got his head down like one of those, you know one of those chimps that have like lost their mate in London Zoo? <laughs> he just sits there like, you know, a, a broken animal. Carl, what are you thinking? Where are you on the happiness scale now of one to ten? Carl? On about a three. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what are you gonna do? Well, we were talking earlier about stuff that happened it's while happened. we've been away. Um, we, we, um, shed, shed, we don't know what shed. I haven't been this upset since, uh, yeah. Skunk and Nancy broke um, up. Yeah, I know. Cheryl Tweedy. Um, we've done that, we've done the tweeter. Um, well, of course, the war. Is that all I've done and dusted now? I think now? it's pretty much over. I think we've, um, we've sorted that out. Okay, good. What annoys me is people going about having to go Tony Blair and Bush right for, like, bomb, you know, bombing stuff and all that. But my point is this, right? Those bombs have all been bought and paid for. Yeah. You, the taxpayer, if they're, uh, yeah, yours. And I'm and not for. a scientist, but I think bombs go off. <laughs> I think so. And if you don't use them, you lose them. <laughs> so let's use them. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like tinned food. It lasts like, like, for a yeah, while, but eventually yeah, it's going to go let's off. Do, it's like anything. Oh, we better eat that. We're, 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 no, don't do the fresh stuff. Don't build the fresh ones. Let's use the old ones. Exactly. So, Because they're know, just stockpiling there and they and cost we, us millions. I know. We want to see if they work as well. What? Oh, no, we never tried that one. Use them. <laughs> use them on just, you know. Oh, exactly. Carl, who would you bomb if you could? Uh, I wouldn't. Matt? What do you mean? Well, what, imagine you could bomb a country. You're not actually <laughs> going to bomb them, but you're just going to frighten them. Just going to put the frighteners on frighten them. Frighten them, yeah. You're just going to go, I'm going to bomb you, and then obviously And they'll go running uh, yeah. uh, and under tin shelters and that. Yeah. R Ricky's house? No, no come on. Honestly, what country? No, what country? I, I wouldn't, I'd, honestly, no one sort of makes me fed up or anything. No one makes you fed up? I'm not not enough that I want to bomb a place. Well, you're not actually going to bomb. You're I won't just get involved. The I just say like did someone else do it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rick? <laughs> I got a list here. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know who I uh, who I threaten? Go on. The Swiss. Oh, they've had it easy. They've always they? had it easy. They've always chicken it. Is that equivalent of having Mondays off? Exactly. Like, oh, we don't want to fight. Exactly. You, can, you can both walk through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're a carpet. Exactly. Well, yeah. we're busy sorting out fascism. Yeah. You know, or Osama bin Laden. They're, they're just in, chilling out. They're holding ours and Hitler's coat. <laughs> exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Little weed. We yeah. Have both turned on them. Yeah. And I'll tell you who else. This will just frighten them up. Just what? shake up a bit. Um, Iceland. They've had it easy. Because they have stayed out of everything. They have not been involved in anything, as far as I can tell. But you don't have to bomb them, do you? Eskimos, they? they've never been involved in anything. I know, but don't bomb them, just pour hot water on their igloos. <laughs> exactly. Just send a plane over with warm yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> with a big flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, just to shake things up a bit, just to keep oh, no, them on yeah. their toes, that's all it is. Why would you live there? If you could choose, I'd If no you're an Eskimo and you're born, and, well, little baby, you grow up and you go, what? 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm eating ice and fish for yeah. the rest of my life. Well, fair You're enough. having a laugh. Fair enough, like years and years ago. But now, presumably, they, they're, off, they're aware of the proper house and the, the fact you can live in, say, Somerset or the south of France. I know. But it's like, haven't they learned? It's sort of like, well, they haven't even got, they're not even on as good a thing as the North American Indians. Now they're sort of pissed up. <laughs> they got smoking fags. They live in lovely little cages. Up. They, they're all brought to their little village. They're having a lo- whale of a the time. They don't have to go hunting anymore. Yeah. And they're not killing buffalo. Exactly. And the same with the es- Eskimos. Let's get them some beer and fags down there. Knock the igloos down. Build them some lovely little oh. semis or like. Or um, just a little kind of trailer or a caravanette or something like that. It's <laughs> yeah. got to be better. It's got to be preferable. <laughs> I know. Some of them have got TV. He's built in, Rick. I know. What what showers? Want? Yeah, they've got cable and stuff, haven't they? Yeah. Or is there one sort of Icelandic well, you channel? Get satellite or whatever, wouldn't you? Magnus Magnuson. Yeah, exactly. Probably doing. There's loads of Mastermind reruns. Yeah. <laughs> and Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> just on a yeah. loop. That's porn over there. Yeah, though. exactly. Oh, brilliant. No, well, that's, oh. Like, that's like a hardcore documentary. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, this is uh, Racist FM 104.9. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would you like to see bombed? Or not bombed? <laughs> <laughs> not bombed, but just put the frighteners on <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, it would Email like ricky.gervais, oh, yeah. Any nation or anything. Carl, thoughts? Play a song? You're not working for your money. You're not having Monday off. We've got to do something Monday. Let's plan something Monday. Just to get him in here. You've got two hours for eight hours off. You don't do an eight hour day anyway. Rick, how but much is he getting paid? He's, get, uh, he's getting money for this. He's, he's, I think his wages went up last time. So he's getting paid to be here, extracurricular, extra work, right? So it's moonlighting. And they're giving him a day off. Yeah. And he's contributing mm, nothing. Nothing. So. Huh? What, Carl? You say something, mate? So. Huh? It's going on. What? Going on with yourself. Well, say something back and earn your money. Well, let's, let's play a song. We've done a bit, done a bit of stuff there. You idiot. Don't say we, mate. I've not heard anything from you. We've heard your contribution. P-I-M-P. 50 Cent on XFM 104.9. Me, Ricky Gervais. Uh, you, Stephen Merchant, and you, Carl Pilkington. All right? What are we doing then? How are we going? Carl, how are you feeling? Uh, what, uh, are you on a scale of ten now, happiness scale? About, uh, just building back up again a bit. Yeah? Why? Probably on about a five. Oh, that's not well, bad. What, what changed it? What changed it? Just calm down a bit. Sure. Yeah. So. The chill out vibes of PIMP probably helped you. Yeah. I think we should just say, um, give massive props. To uh, Adam and Joe, who stood in for oh, us. Oh yeah, stood for in for us. Uh, Did great uh, job. Yeah, great, really good. In Better. fact, interesting. Are, are they, they going to get their own show here? I think they should. Yeah, they'll probably get something. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, um, it's interesting. Cause I was listening to them. And they they had quite a nice selection of features. They had a couple of good competitions and things. Now I don't know if um, having done them for XFM, is it somehow they may be kind of under some kind of XFM copyright, which would mean as we've got no ideas, maybe we could just hijack just some, of some of theirs. Maybe you could look no, into yeah. that. Obviously not Monday, you're not here, but... I was with Joe Cornish last night, went to oh, a yeah. little, um, do at, uh, um, Jonathan's house, and Joe was there. And he walked in, and I was taken aback by how tall he is. Sure. Because I f- I, I'd forgotten, and he's about 6'4", but he's unlikely to... Do you know what I mean by mm. that? It's mm. sort of like some people surprise you. And, um, he was going, you know, he said, I don't consider, um, 6'4". Uh, big. I said, well, it is pretty big. I said, but I know what you mean. I walk around with Steve Merchant. Yeah. And uh, he went, how tall Steve? And I said, six, six, six foot seven. Yep. And Joe went, oh, that's that's a, that's nearly a disability, isn't it? Do you know, he's absolutely right as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. No, yeah, do you know, yeah. I genuinely, since school, I <laughs> used to go to school with a little disabled fella. Lovely guy. No, I swear to God, lovely guy. And I remember he came in when we got in the sixth form and he he basically got, I don't know what the ins and outs of it were, but as far as I could tell, he'd got a car for free. A specially converted car, yeah. you know, because he was disabled. And yeah. uh, he was same as Carl, around. same as Carl. Me, me, me. I need this, I need that. But it seemed to me that I was thinking, well, why can I not get something similar? Because there are some cars I can't fit in, because I'm too tall. I genuinely cannot drive the smaller cars, the cheaper cars. I've got, I'm obliged to buy a more expensive, larger car, because I can't fit in the time. Yeah, that's like saying you've got to pay more for your shoes, because there's more leather, which is true. Which is absolutely true. It's no, a nightmare yeah, getting shoes. But fat people have to pay Do more Do you know what? It's a nightmare getting chairs, comfy chairs that I can sit in at the home. I, I sit in a chair for very long and my back's killing me. Now, how is that not a disability? But no, I don't see, I don't, you don't see people like me whinging. But I think tall people, uh, I've read an article that taller people on average, uh, get 
uh, higher wages through something, through, you know, an advantage, or just because they're taken more seriously than little dumpy fellas. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I don't think so there are, I, I genuinely don't think there are many benefits of being really tall. People seem to assume there are, but beyond the fact that I can reach things down from a high shelf. I know. I don't think there's any real perks. I've seen you hit your head a few times. That's I, a disability. I know, I have seen you hit your head a few times, and I think, oh God. That must have hurt. Obviously, I'll make sure okay and then laugh. Of course. But I know it must be annoying. No, but I mean, there, there, uh, there, there's a pub. There's one pub in Soho that he has to go down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he has to leave that. It looks like a limbo dancer. Yeah, I've, they've <laughs> almost got to lower me in on roots. I, I always find it amusing. But, oh, it's, but like, for instance, on a plane, on an aeroplane, I can't get some of the seats. I can't fit in some of the seats. Not yeah, in any way. Not, not the way a that I could. Well, you're people, talking about how is that not a disability? There's some seats that people can't afford because they're poor. It's not that a disability. Was Don't go on a plane then, because you're poor. But if you can't afford to go on a plane, you can't afford to go on a plane. You should have studied hard at school. But what annoys, yeah, but I mean, what annoys me about that is if there's there's this a, is there's, a physical disability yeah, I was I've born with. There's a, there's a weight allowance, so I might not be allowed loads of bags on, but there might be a big fat pig in the queue who's allowed the same chocolate but allowance as me. that's because they've been eating like a bloater. I couldn't stop myself from growing this tall. It wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't think. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I won't. I won't smoke when I'm a teenager. Maybe I'll shoot up. <laughs> I'll eat healthy. I'll probably add an extra two feet. Uh, they well just you, kept going. You do eat too healthy. You eat too, way too many greens. But that's not why I grew to this height. It's I a know, genetic well, thing, isn't it? it? Yeah, but if you live near, a, you know, a, some sort of pylon or something and just, as, as I say, smoked from an early age, you wouldn't have been that don't, tall. Don't think when I was a gangly teenager having the piss taken out of me, I wasn't thinking <laughs> I wish I'd been born near a pylon. <laughs> could you? You know, or Chernobyl. Could your mum or dad, say, could have, could they have banded you like they did with little, uh, didn't they do that with someone's feet? Well, yeah, concubine. Yeah, yes. I didn't they, come they out this with... tall, did I? Yeah. No, but <laughs> I like it shot in the they bandaged him. They'd have to bandage him round the feet and round the top of the head. Yeah, I'd be walking around like a mummy. <laughs> yeah, 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 or a bonsai boy. But I, people didn't really realise I was going to be this tall until I was 14 or 15. Mm. You know, you don't realise when you're an eight year old. How tall, tall, how tall were you when you were about like a gangly, okay, so a typical gangly teenager, 15. How tall were you at 15? I don't know, six foot five maybe? <laughs> And I bet you were like a bean pole, weren't you? Well, of course. Yeah. And what sort of glasses did you have? Cool. And then what did you have? I don't know, a monocle. <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> did you wear a bow tie once? Did when I you... wore a bow tie? I thought, I thought, I was trying to preempt the styles that might be coming round. I mean, I think I've been watching a lot of George Formby films. <laughs> And I thought it can only be a lot. It can only be a matter of time before the bow tie comes in. I thought it might be quite kind of urbane and debonair. Yeah. So what was that? Was for Robin one? Day at the height of his fame? <laughs> I think he might around this time. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go for that dandy look. I thought that's <laughs> what the girls are going for. I know, yeah. The dandy. Oh dear. So I, I still want to my... see you with a pipe and trilby. Yeah. I just think you'd look great I'd walking like along the boater. street. <laughs> but, yeah. Awesome. Oh, but I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowances it for being count count as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is. can you explain, for instance, you know, travelling on a bus the, or a coach? There's some the seats I can't see. The advantage is, uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. What's that a disability? Are that people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah, it's the same okay. as the big fat people. It's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get and the sort of Steve's, sort of stare. Steve well, obviously gets. I'm gonna, sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, Follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, <laughs> like, with you, the goal. Oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you, it's more like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what frustrates me? <laughs> I I thought he did deserve having a Monday off. I've changed yeah. my tune. Yeah, yeah. I was try sometimes, I mean, you don't realise this, listeners, but sometimes I'm an intermediary. I do step in when he's winding him up, because yeah. Carl gets to the point where he's going to explode. Yeah, and it's crazy. Says, okay, Jeff, but leave and him I step in, and yeah. this is the kind of response I get from Carl. This is the kind of back chat I get Well, I tell you, he's a little user. Cause he's, I'll tell you what, because he's too scared of winding you up, because he knows that you'll just walk out of here and he won't get his Monday off. Absolutely. Play a record, you little oik. Weasel. She You're a weasel. <laughs> Joe Jackson, different for girls on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, he's annoying me now. Cause he's, he's, he's got a day off and he's got two hours and he's miserable. He's not even doing anything to the show. It really annoys me. Well, hang on, wait a minute. What? You, you've forgotten his brilliant film quiz. Yeah. He's contributed that. That he probably did during the week. 
Well, Do you know what uh, I mean? What, are you, gonna, are you gonna change your attitude, Carl, or what? Or should we just, like, not bother with this show? Told you. What? Don't, don't annoy me and you'll get the best out of me. Yeah? I can't, I told you, I, I told you, this show is to annoy you. You knew that. But this is what you're gonna get. Do you know what I mean? But no, you got you got to be good and get the day off. Always no point for I, I, any of us. Right. If you were having an operation, would you annoy the doctor? <laughs> what? You the... can't concentrate, can he? <laughs> Don't mind him. The fact that he's a doctor. <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got to press a button and find out what a monkey did in <laughs> 1932. <laughs> and it's oh. Where's the monkey news? It's, it's been a bit quiet, and it. I've been. What in the last eye three out. months? Okay, uh, there was something that I found last week about. Uh, one that was in an old people's home. Um, <laughs> it, it escaped from some zoo, it was wandering about, it was enjoying itself, and then when it got to the night time, it was like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and the first place it came across was like this old people's home. Yeah. Went in there, I think it was there for about a week and a half, <laughs> without anyone realising. No. No, no, no. No, no, it did. No, what, what, so, so the, the helpers and the nurses and the, the social workers, and the, the matrons and all that, they thought, well, uh, Mr. Sanders looks a bit hairy. <laughs> but, I mean, that happens, you, you know, it comes out of your ear and your nose when you get to about 70. <laughs> and he stooped over, yeah, of course he has, he's got bow legs, yeah. And he eats more fruit, of course he does. Well, that, that's when they, that's when they realised. Why? Because the, someone in the kitchen said, hang on a minute, getting through more bananas than we know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, sure. do the competition. Do the one thing you've done this week. Probably in their time again. You're getting paid for it. You're having Mondays right, so off. Yeah, and you're not that, into it, so that, that waste film, of time. That film sounds good. It yeah. was like this. Yeah, okay. Come then. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well happy yeah. now I've had that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So that's a bit of a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, someone eating this woman. Yeah. And he's happy that yeah. he had that. Yeah, go on. Yeah. That was Gladiator. So. Yeah. Who, who wins a, cu stuff? a couple of people sent I, in, I sent in Hannibal, which would still work. Yeah. And, um, someone else sent in Maneater, which I suppose works as well. Although he did put the thing in about, I'm well happy, mm. glad. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know, it's not, so. it's, it's not worth the, uh, I don't know, underquilly gets with this and a day off, no. Well, right, Eva, who got the answer right, Eva, who got the answer right, well done to her, I'm gonna give her the prizes, she said that she'd heard this before on Christine O'Connell's show. Ah, oh, this is really annoying. Right, that's it. You're gonna do summer or we're gonna stop this and you have to work Mondays again. Cause you are taking the piss out of me, you're taking the piss out of Graham, and you're taking the piss out of London. I'll see you next week and you can change your attitude. Lim Biscuit, we may be back next week, it depends how Carl, uh, gets on, maybe okay. bucks up his attitude. Thanks for listening.